Let's take a look at access modifiers. All right, we're first back and tell you once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about access modifiers over here. Now, what's quite important, as you can clearly see, is we are working with the code from the previous tutorial. So if you've either not seen it or you don't know the code, you can go into the description below and there is the code from the last tutorial as well. So that is going to be basically where we will work off of. And the thing we will work off of is the dog class, of course, because we're going to now change this up a bit. Because there are basically four new keywords that we will learn. That's going to be public, protected, private, and static. So we're going to learn a lot of things over here. And we'll immediately start by saying, well, public. We've seen this plenty of times before. We see it right here. Public, public, right? public, public, public. Everything is public. What does that mean? Well, it basically means if I just add a comment over here that is accessible, right? Because we're talking about accessibility. Like from where can we access this particular variable or class or method or member? Right? This is accessible from anywhere and changeable. So that is what public means, right? Then we can get one more step that is protected, as you can see. And protected means it is accessible in subclasses and same package. This is quite important. So same package means because the doc class and the main class are both in the same Calendral package, I can still call Benji.picture because that is because that is public and the name is the protected variable, but I can still call that because it is in the same package. And then there's the last thing and that is very interesting and that is private. And private, well, 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 that means it is accessible only within the class itself. That means this age plus plus over here or or setting the age like this, that's all fine. But if I return to the main class, you can see every single time I'm trying to access age over here, it doesn't work. It all turns red because it is private access. We would have to change it. And usually that is not what you want to do. We can even see this if I start typing this. You can see age is no longer suggested over here. And if I actually type it out, it does say, oh yeah, the age does exist, but it is private. So we cannot access it. So how we go about this? But there's multiple ways that we can deal with this. Number one is to make something called a getter and a setter. So you don't always want to do this, right? Sometimes for certain variables, you only want a getter. Sometimes you only want a setter. That's rare, but basically that is a way of getting access to this variable without explicitly making this variable or this field accessible. The reason why this is so important is because it gives you way more control because a getter or a setter are methods. So if I were to say a public int get age, right? then we will just return the age variable right here. That gives me way more power because I can add certain other things inside of this method. Similar thing would be in the public void set age method, right? Where I will have a parameter that's going to be the age, right? And this method simply does this.age equal to the age parameter right here. So this would be a getter and this is what is called a setter. I think the names are pretty self-explanatory, right? This is the general idea and the naming convention always is get and then the name of the field over here, but this time in uppercase, because once again, when we think back to the convention for methods, the first letter for methods is always lowercase, while every subsequent word starts with an uppercase character. And the reason why this is so interesting is for a setter, for example, I can make sure that if age all of a sudden is lower than zero, right? I could just say, you know, I could output something or I can throw an error or something like that because that, of course, doesn't make any sense. So a setter gives you way more possibility of controlling what a certain field might look like, what value it might take. And now what we can do in the main method over here, instead of age, you can see IntelliJ is smart enough to know, replace this with a getter and it does it automatically. This is pretty freaking cool. So we can now do this for each one of our ages and look at this one. It is even smart enough to know to replace this with a setter. So we just call the set age over here with a hundred. Of course, that's still not quite what we want, right? So this might not be a thing that we want to do. So for the sake of argument, let's actually delete those two lines. And let's talk about the last thing that we want to talk about. And that is the static keyword. So we've seen the static keyword right here, right? Static. And every time I asked you to create a method inside of the main class over here, right? Previously, I always said, just make it public and static. We'll talk about the, both of those in a future tutorial. Well, this future tutorial is right now. So what does static mean? Well, let's actually make an example of this. And then hopefully you will understand it. So the idea is if I make a public static integer we'll call this the number of dogs and we're going to make this equal to zero right here and then every time the constructor right every time we create a dog we're going to say number of dogs plus plus so that's going to be very interesting indeed so what is that going to do well let's just take a look and let's actually print this out right so let's say system out print line and we're going to say how many dogs are there 
and then we're going to say dog dot number of dogs. So the first thing you notice is that number of dogs, I just called this on the dog class. I didn't use Benji or Jeremy. Before, we always had to use the actual variable. This time, I'm using the class name. That's kind of strange. Indeed, indeed. But how many dogs are we going to have? Well, in theory, we have two dogs. Is this going to be two? And of course, there are two dogs. Okay. Now, if I were to create another dog in between, right? Let's say dog Charlie over here, which is equal to a new dog. And this is going to be charlie.jpg. And it's going to be Charlie, and Charlie is going to be 11 years old, right? And I were to print this out again, I select it, press Control C to copy it, Control V to paste it in. You will see, afterwards, we have three dogs. Fascinating. So what is this count or number of dogs now? Well, that field is a static variable, which means that there's basically one copy shared by all the dogs. So this is, you can think of this sort of as a global variable where the value is shared among all the dogs, right? It's just a number of how many dogs there are. It doesn't matter if, if you ask Benji or Jeremy or Charlie in this instance, right? The number of dogs is always going to be some sort of singular integer. It's not going to be different for each dog. Right? So you can think of this as basically saying that there's ever only one copy of this particular variable versus the age, which is, of course, different for each of your dogs. That's the general idea. And because we're using the constructor right here and we're increasing this number, it's going to increase for each dog that gets, that gets created. However, it is independent of any dog that gets created. So that would mean if I wouldn't have any dogs, right? So if I were to just go absolutely crazy over here and I would just do this, right? So now I'm not creating any singular dog, right? Actually, we have no dogs. Well, then obviously this is going to say zero because there are no dogs that are existing right now. We've not created any instance of that class. But we can still use the class name dot and call any static method or or field or member without any issues. Of course, the idea of static members is goes way deeper than this as well. But this is just sort of a first introduction of this, just so that you've number one seen this keyword, right? And that it doesn't require an instance to actually access. You can just access it via the class itself. Yeah, and those are the access modifiers. Pretty freaking neat and pretty freaking cool. I highly suggest, as always, you play around with this a little bit, just seeing, you know, what happens, you know, if you put something into private, make something public, make something protected. Highly recommended to play around with this and just see what you might be able to come up with. I want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons and members on YouTube for basically making this series and a lot of my other tutorials possible. Thank you so much for the support, guys. And if you also want to support the channel, take a look at the Patreon link, or you can also support by becoming a member on this channel. Thank you so much, everyone, for your continued support. But that is going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we are going to talk about inheritance and polymorphism, two very long words for two actually not as complicated concepts. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.